Aloha. You're watching Cradle Point, part of Erickson's weekly threat intelligence hot shots. We're in episode seven. This is always presented by the Cradle Point threat intelligence team. And as always, I have Alex Ryan with me. She's our senior threat intelligence analyst. How's it going, Alex? Yeah, doing good. Little toasty here in Oregon, but, uh, you know, doing good. Summer's here. Yeah, we've had a couple hot days here in San, uh, San, in Southern California. Last week, I thought it was February. This week, I thought I was in San Jose. <laughs> now, real quick before we get started, you know, folks, I've been wearing my reverse logoed shirts the last couple of weeks. I meant to bring this up last week and apologies for the little self-indulgence, but I did want to bring your attention and hope you can go check out Cradle Point, part of Erickson's YouTube channel. It's just at Cradle Point One. And this is where you'll find our demo series. Our light boards are starting to appear on the Cradle Point YouTube channel. And just kind of make you aware. Hopefully, you can pop on over there after this video, of course, and check out the Cradle Point One YouTube channel. But as always, we're hitting episode seven. I might have mentioned that at the top, Alex. Our weekly hot shots presented by the Cradle Point Threat Intelligence Team, which you are a big part of. So what's hot this past week? You bet. Okay. So I really wanted to talk about the ransomware, uh, sorry, the ransom hub, ransomware as a service. Uh, new player in our ransomware, you know, <laughs> plethora of players. So it's a new cyber gang that has turned up and they have a new malware and the malware is called Ransom Hub. Now the group is also going by Ransom Hub, but one of the reasons that I wanted to sort of really highlight this new uh, platform that's coming up is the speed at which it came up. So we'll talk about some other sort of indicators about why I think we're going to see this more in the future, this ransomware. But just to start in, it came online in February in March, it had 27 attacks. In April, it had 26 attacks. And it's ranked as the fifth most attacks in April behind player and, or sorry, play and then Lockbit and Black Basta. So it has landed and expanded fast. And one of the indicators or sort of reasons that we think this is, is that these are veteran operators, right? These are not folks who are just new to the RAS game. These are folks that have come from other um, RAS platforms that have, you know, gone, come and gone just recently, especially Lockbit and Alpha V. So we're taking, we're seeing this what we expect to see is sort of this movement of affiliates and ransomwares in the environment in sort of a very organic way. And so this is Ransom Hub coming up with veteran operators and we're seeing some big affiliates move over to Ransom Hub. So that's another indicator that we're gonna be seeing this going forward. We've got some Noboris, I think is one of the affiliates that is moving over. And then we're also seeing that the change healthcare data that was leaked um, back in February. And then we had that big Alpha V exit, exit scam situation. That healthcare data is being sold on Ransom Hub, which means that they're also working as a broker between different uh, buyers on the dark web. So again, an indicator that this is a pretty mature group who is running this ransomware as a service gang. And they get straight to the point in their name, don't they? Ransom Hub. It's like no question what's going on on this site. Yeah, absolutely. So again, with Raz, one of the things that we have to remember is that it's the affiliates who are doing the initial access. And then they are using the ransom hub malware to uh, do the ransomware activity of encryption, exfiltration, and then using the Raz platform to manage their... Um, negotiations with the client right through a tour site or something like that. So when we talk about, am I vulnerable? And should I be worried about this? We need to look at how the affiliates do the initial access to give us an idea of that. Yeah. And on some other sites, it's really not that expensive to get in the game, especially if you're a novice. And I've seen, might've been Alpha V or a couple other sites, you know, you're able to get a full phishing or ransomware kit with legit looking sites for like 250 bucks. 
Like it is, it is, that is really not a barrier of entry. You know, if you want to kind of get into the criminal realm, if that's your game these days, <laughs> that's your cup of tea. <laughs> right. No, absolutely. I didn't see an amount listed for an affiliate to join um, onto this platform that hasn't, I didn't see that in my research and it didn't specify what kinds of controls it might have in sort of like what I would call, you know, additional, uh, features, but, you know, mainly the ability to get the ransomware, download it. Um, it's highly obfuscated in the way that it executes. And we'll talk about this in a minute, minute. So it's really tough to detect. So you get to download that malware and then the administration panel of, you know, have I infected someone? And then also that negotiation platform uh, are the two or the three features that I've seen most discussed about this. And then you just brought up the what, what, how do you go about kind of understanding this? Yeah, exactly. So we want to talk about, right? So, you know, no one's got time. So am I vulnerable? So if you have an Active Directory server that has not been updated since 2020, no judgment, then you're probably vulnerable. And the reason is that there's a vulnerability back from 2020 where there is a built-in uh, service or process on Windows devices and the domain controller called net login remote protocol and it's got you know a cvs uh as critical vulnerability rating and so you can use this protocol from any domain joined device in order to contact the domain the active directory domain server and use a privilege escalation to get access to that active directory server and you would be in administrative um, privileges. Now, for me, anytime I hear Active Directory compromise, I hear cred dump. So even if your affiliate is coming in and is going to deploy Ransom Hub, when they um, compromise Active Directory, 100, I told, okay, 99.9, .9, I am sure that they're going to do a cred dump, exfiltrate those credentials for sale with an initial access broker. So there are going to be additional activities associated with this ransomware infection. But, you know, obviously their end goal is to deploy the ransomware and, and ransom the victim. Now, as just a few minutes ago when we were prepping for this, you were telling me about this whole safe mode situation and how uh, scary that could be. Yeah, absolutely. This falls into the things Alex doesn't like category. <laughs> So uh, part uh, a feature of this ransomware is that it will reboot the device that it wants to encrypt and it will boot it into safe mode and then it will begin the encryption. And this is important because a lot of us defenders have, you know, host based detections, EDRs. And one of the detections that they have is that if files are beginning to encrypt very quickly uh, or just, you know, just wow, a whole bunch of stuff being encrypted, the EDR will shut down that process and stop the encryption from continuing. Mm -hmm. However, when you're in safe mode, the EDR typically isn't running. And so it yeah. won't, that defense won't be effective. So I really don't like this one. Um, and it's, it's quite an advanced feature. So um, this malware is actually a third iteration. It used to be night ransomware, which uh, version 3.0 of night ransomware was uh, sold in in November of last year. And before that, it was Cyclops. So we definitely see sort of this iteration on the code base for uh, Ransom Hub, which means that hopefully we'll have indicators in the past for those other two ransomwares that would alert for Ransom Hub. But because of the advanced obfuscation that they have built into Ransom Hub, that, that's kind of a, a lower probability right now. <laughs> Getting more sophisticated as as the days, weeks, and months go on, and of course, if any of you would oh, like to dig a little, back. I'm not, I'm oh. not doing jabbing, jabbering. There you go. Okay, here we go. So the initial, so the affiliates, right? So we need to know how are the affiliates getting in? They're using remote access tools, and then for lateral movement discovery, how do you find the actor of directory server? They're using NetScan. So if mm. we're talking on the defender side, like how do I look for this on a threat hunting? or how do I defend myself, right? Definitely patch your Active Directory servers, but if for whatever reason you can't do that. Uh, most of the IOCs are host-based hash files. And we all know that that's like very easy for the attacker to 
change that hash signature. And so that's a really tough, um, it's not a high confidence or a high probability that those are those are going to hit every time. But social engineering users to download remote access tools, that's one of the key ways that remote access tools get downloaded. So either social engineering mm -hmm. or if somebody downloads an infected software. So have and typically they're going to do that on their browser, right? Either they're going to be socially engineered to go to a website, pull it down, or, you know, they're going around looking for something and then they download a, a software that's infected. So having, you know, content, downloaded content review is really important. So this is called browser, browser isolation in the industry, right? So being able to put the browser into a sandbox that is even off of the computer, right? Not a local sandbox, but a right. remote sandbox in the cloud in order to do uh, content disarm and reconstruction for what the user is downloading. That will be a really good defense against just even getting, you know, the initial access um, stopped, thwarted. And yeah. then for threat hunting, you know, looking for scanning activity with the NetScan tool, and then unexpected remote access tools. If you can detect applications on your um, on your network and the ports that you know Atera and Splashtop are using, look for those, and that might lead you to um, an infection in your in your environment. Okay, I'm done. Key information as I jump the gun to. <laughs> To the sources. So if you'd like to dig any deeper into uh, this particular, you know, critical situation, obviously we provide the links and sources, but I know you wanted to point out the NCC group research and why is that? Yeah, absolutely. So I did quite a bit of research to get this all together. So shout out to the security researchers for making this all easily accessible for us all. But I really like research posts that tell me like technically, like real technical <laughs> information, like what's the command? What's the port? How does this all work together? And sometimes there's this sort of like this hand wavy, oh, it just does this. And I'm like, mm, I need more. So I found this blog called NCC Group Research Blog. And they had some really great technical information in there. And I looked through some of their other blog posts and they still had really good depth in there. So I found a new source, just thought I would pass it on because we always need good quality sources. So uh, of just course. To and shout there. out to NCC Group Research. We'll include all of these links in the description, of course. And as always, thanks for your time every week, Alex. Definitely uh, uh, eye-opening, I guess. Is I mean, we know this happens every week, but then when it's when it's presented in the manner you present, it's kind of like holy cow. We really got to keep an eye out for all of these. Appreciate your time as always. Yeah. We'll see you, you, Alex, and you <laughs> watching next week, hopefully. If you enjoy content like this, of course, hit the subscribe, the like, the share button. We come at you every Friday and or Saturday, depending on when we record. Um, and really appreciate you guys joining us. So for my good pal, Alex, appreciate your time as always. I know I've said that probably three or four times, but it's genuine each time. <laughs> I'm Peter, and we're with Cradle Point. Thanks for watching. Stay cool, everyone.